Nana has been painting on the back porch, as you can see. Y'all wanna come inside? Come on. Big goof, come on. I've been very sick the last few days, actually. Um, I know I haven't posted in a few days. <laughs> I <don't. laughs> I'm feeling much better today though. And uh, I had to take some antibiotics, which I really don't like to do and don't often do, which um, Anytime you take a round of antibiotics, I think they say it takes like a year for your gut health to get back to what it was beforehand. And kind of funny, I had just ordered all of this stuff, like these cultures, to start with some cheese making and some fermenting. Um, and they came in while I was <laughs> starting antibiotics. I was like, well, okay. So I, uh, I got some yogurt starter culture. This is from a place called Cultures for Health. I've made yogurt many times. I usually just use a yogurt from the store as my starter and then just carry it on for there. But I thought I would start with this heirloom yogurt culture and just see if I felt like it was any different. I also got like some sour cream starter. I'm gonna try to do some things with our goat's milk. And then also there's a farm locally to me that I can get raw cow's milk from. Also Greek yogurt starter culture. Uh, multiple cheese starter cultures. I'm even gonna try some chev. I've had 15 people tell me different ways to pronounce this, but it's goat cheese. There was a hilarious little bit on a live video recently where you guys learned that I have one food aversion and that is like pungent goat cheese. I can handle goat's milk mozzarella and cheeses made with fresh goat's milk that don't taste like goat cheese, but you know what I'm talking about, that like tangy goat cheese. I used to love it. Before I had a farm, I loved goat cheese. I would order it on anything and eat it anytime I could and I would purchase it at the store and eat it on crackers and um, I just really liked it. And then I started keeping goats and now that goat cheese tastes like licking a hoof to me. So I just, I have this food aversion. However, I had multiple people tell me that it's different if you make it at home. And I know that a lot of other things are definitely completely different when they're homemade or homegrown. So I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I got the culture to make some homemade goat cheese. And hopefully it does not make me rue the day that I bought that culture. Also got some more rennet. Um, basically I'm just getting back in my cheese making stuff because I have a goat in milk now. I'm not getting a lot of milk from her, but it's enough to kind of play around with. So this will be coming soon. And I got some uh, sourdough starter. I have attempted to make sourdough starters for myself at home multiple times from scratch. Um, and as Jeremiah is quick to bust me out, I'm really good at forgetting stuff like that. So maybe this will be a little easier and faster. I'm gonna stick all of these things in the refrigerator because cultures do better in the fridge. And we are gonna go outside. But I'm also uh, planning to start doing kefir again. And my friend Jill is gonna come over and help me get started on kombucha. Because aside from being on antibiotics, um, it's really good to, to eat fermented food regularly to keep your gut healthy. Oh, my sunflower bed, I'm afraid, has now peaked. It's on the, the downward slope. They're starting to kind of hang their heads. Still very beautiful, and it was gorgeous while it lasted. Come on, bear. Y'all know that feeling when you're sick for some days, and then you get mostly better, but you still feel really, like, weak? And you go out to like your normal routine and it feels just completely weird. <laughs> that is me right now. I'm sure y'all can tell. I'm just kind of like, oh, we have a farm. <laughs> oh, well. Hey guys. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Okay, y'all. I want you guys to see this rooster. See this big guy coming right here? So this is a, a white Brahma rooster. And there's the white Brahma hen right next to him. And this guy is massive. It's hard to tell and he's still really young, 
but I have very high hopes for him being just a splendid rooster. Need to get some fresh bedding in here. So on top of being inside, because I wasn't feeling well, uh, we got a lot of rain the last couple of days because of Tropical Storm Beta. So my farm is kind of just a muddy mess right now. Like, look at this. Gross. We are getting a lovely bunch of eggs every day though. <laughs> hey, you guys enjoyed the rain, didn't you? <laughs> hey Thorin, what's up babe? What's up handsome man? Bear, leave him alone darling. Hey honey, hi. Oh, you stink. Y'all, he is such a big buck. And so handsome. Hey, Thorin. I'm not going to touch him because he smells bad, bad. I mentioned in a recent video about male goats, bucks, and how they get stinky when they're in rut. And the, one of the reasons they get stinky is because they pee on their face. And I said that and people are like, oh, are you being like, you know, is that hypothetical? Or like, what do you mean by that? And I mean exactly what I'm saying. They actually pee on their face. And some people said, how do they do that? And I'm not gonna put it in a video because, well, it's gross. And they really just do it whenever the female goats are around. But um, it's an acrobatic feat and quite impressive if you're a female goat. Because apparently they really dig that sort of thing. <laughs> but I'll tell you that a goat in rut, the smell, it like clings. And if you so much as touch them for just a moment, you will smell like an animal that pees on their face all the time. <laughs> It's pretty gross. <laughs> Listen to this little chorus. Good morning. Got a little sit and stump here. One of the guineas did not make it in and regrets the decision. It's constantly trying to get in. I think what we're actually going to do is let the other guinea out to uh, wander around the farm. I think they'll stay pretty close. They can fly very well. We haven't clipped their feathers. And so I think they'll probably just roost on top of this turkey house if we let them out. That, that's what that one has been doing that is out. But the turkeys are in here and they're looking really good. These are our heritage breed turkeys. Hey darlings. So we've got um, some blue slates. A few bourbon red hens. We didn't end up with a bourbon red tom. And then we have a couple of Narragansett hens and a Narragansett tom. We have three blue slate toms, so we, we probably won't need to keep all of them. <laughs> now, the purpose of this flock and why we're keeping them contained like this is because we've tried to raise heritage turkeys a few times now and they always end up running away into the woods because we there's like a thousand acres of of woods right behind us um and there are we have a lot of wild turkeys here in central arkansas so they end up kind of here in the call of the wild and just going uh but this flock here obviously is mixed so we're not going to be breeding purebred turkeys and we will downsize this flock a little bit we won't keep all of these as a breeding flock because this isn't a massive space it's a pretty big size space but we want them to have the the space to be able to move around plenty hey ross poldark how are you man good morning good morning <laughs> you handsome brute we get him bear you're gonna smell like a goat this down not forget it I shared about my two sisters garden in my garden tour the other day my two sisters you notice how I said that because the third sister the squash died and I really should have added um, it's kind of like two bereaved sisters and a cousin because we did plant sunflowers in here also you can kind of do sunflowers or corn with a three sisters garden and we did sunflowers and corn had pretty sparse germination but this sure is lovely to look at look at that beautiful flower one day i want to plant a whole field full of sunflowers it would be such a short-lived reward you know they're only like as beautiful as they 
you know they will be they peak for like a week or so but I'm feeling very wooed by them right now that sunflower bed in the front just totally did it for me oh look at my little sprouts coming up here that's so nice these are turnips right here and I feel like here in the back uh, these have really hit a good growth spurt and have gotten very established being down the last few days kind of slowed down my plans for out here but it's not that big of a deal uh, one thing I'm trying to figure out what to do um, moving forward is whether or not I need to close up the high tunnel take the shade cloth off like exactly at what point I should do that and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and close it up and then see where it's at basically I don't want I don't want it to get so hot in here that it forces my cold weather crops to seed, but I also don't want to block so much sun that I make them grow really slow, especially these things that are direct sun. I want them to be as established as possible before the days get a lot shorter and it gets colder. So kind of uh, towing that line and figuring out what to do. I think we're gonna start by closing it up and see what happens and then uh, if we need to we'll take the shade cloth off next week our lows are going to be pretty you know pretty low for us this time of year usually we don't freeze until the end of october so for us to be getting anywhere close to it by the end of september just i i feel like it might come early this year so just kind of planning out what i want to do with that being the case what are you doing bear still have more seeds to sow um, out here. Different carrots. I'm going to be growing some different spinach. I've also got these seeds and I came out here for a little while yesterday because apparently just laying down and doing nothing is difficult for me. And so I toted a bunch of seeds out here and uh, thought I might work. I was not feeling good. <laughs> I got out here and I ended up sitting down on one of the little posts of the bed and just staring at the at the stuff for like a good solid 20 minutes and I was like this is not what I should be doing with myself right now. And I went inside and Nana got on to me and told me to go back to bed. <laughs> These seeds aren't getting wet or anything. It's just damp in the air. They're okay for a little while but I wouldn't want to leave them out here really long term. I've already sown a lot of things. I've Obviously I've got some red lettuces and some more kale and some Chinese cabbage going along this side. The whole, all the way down to the end, Harris turnips. There are radishes all throughout here, some carrots in the middle here. There are still a few blank spaces. And then over here, I did uh, rutabagas all down this side and then all down this side is a variety of kales down to the end and then it's some red Brussels sprouts and then all in the middle of this one is not yet sown. Already the high tunnel is proving to be such a, a like refuge for me in this fall season and I'm so thankful that we're gonna have it through the winter. Um, multiple people commented on this and it, it's funny because you know, we make these videos and I kind of share my heart with you guys and give you a look into my life. And it surprises me sometimes the astute observations that people make. Um, and it makes complete sense that you would. I, at this point, I think you probably, probably know more about me than I even realize. But uh, I've had multiple people say that they can tell what a difference the high tunnel is making in my mental state at the end of the gardening season like at, in the fall that usually i am in the season really overcoming a lot of sadness and like stealing myself for the winter and not having a garden because it is the garden is such an important thing to me it really is such a place of refuge to me and multiple people pointed that out and to be honest i didn't even realize it until you guys pointed it out and i started thinking about it and truly like at the end of this season i'm always like okay it's okay and for me knowing that i'm gonna have this even though it'll be really hands-off uh, the closed up high tunnel is not going to be nearly as much work as a summer garden like vegetable plants are just a lot easier to deal with than fruiting plants and it's just completely different classification of work input but um and the pests in the winter just it's just completely different it's very autopilot uh, but just knowing that i'll have this it definitely has me 
in a much more optimistic state going into the winter season. I think I'm gonna drag a chair up from the front garden and just stick it right here in the middle so I can just come sit in the presence of all of my growing things. Back here, you can see here in the middle, I actually transplanted several kales. I thinned them out where they were direct sown over there and just transplanted them here into this bed. So this long row of dinosaur kale down the middle were little sprouts that otherwise would have just been thinned and thrown away and now they're going to grow big full-size plants. And at some point these cabbages will get so large that they sort of choke those out but I'll be able to harvest quite a bit off of them in the meantime. That never gets old. <laughs> well, I'm still not 100%. Um, still feeling just a little bit yucky, so I'm going to go back inside. I just didn't want to leave you guys hanging with uh, another day without a video. Uh, we start getting emails after a few days with people being like, are you okay? Because <laughs> it is so unlike us. So I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on. Take a quick look at the farm. We're definitely in the midst of the changing seasons. And it's okay. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.